Okay, so now we're back. That feels better. So the BIA, you know, can be, uh, you know, quite the point of contention. You know, ultimately, and I've uh, started to write about it myself, is, you know, we're we're talking to all these people, and we want to know, you know, what's important to the organization. Well, you know, um, if you want to know what's important to the organization, go to the leadership. There isn't a, any executive that will not tell you, this is what our priority is. This is what we expect to see in a disaster. This is what we want um, dealt with first. These are the things you know that uh, uh, we want to make sure are still available. You know, so with that in mind, why would we go do a BIA when everybody tells us that they're important, right? Everyone, no, nobody wants to admit they're not important. Uh, you know, very few do, but nobody wants to. And we have that list with, you know, we need this at four, four hour mark and the 20 hour mark and 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 or, you know, two hours, whatever the case may be. This is what's important. This one needs to be up and running. I've been in a situation uh, where I presented a BA findings and I had my draft report saying, okay, well, here's the list of functions and here's what everybody has said so far, you know, and that's all it was, you know, so far, you know, we, there was still some vetting that I had to do. There were still some questions that I knew were out there, you know, why would this be up here if such and such is a dependency and it's way down here, you know, so, um, and I showed him this list and he, looked at the BIA, all the processes and the priorities of what should come up when. And I quote, this is embarrassing. And my initial thought was, oh my God, what did I do wrong? You know, like, yikes, you know, I'm sitting here with the CFO, you know, what did I do wrong? <laughs> and he said, there's a disconnect between what executives believe is a priority for the organization and what all the department managers and subject matter experts were saying was uh, important. So we obviously, you know, had to go back and make a change um, so that the priority list from the BIA uh, aligned with what executive expectations were. And that's one of the big points with the BIA is <clears throat> does it align do the findings align with what executives expect? Chances are pretty good it might not. And in my case, uh, in a few cases, it doesn't. You know, right now, you know, if I do a BIA, I do go to executives first. You know, find out, well, what's important to you guys? You know, and then it's a lot easier to do the BIA afterwards. You know, if someone says, you know, oh, my sales is, uh, you know, critical, it has to be up in two, two hours. No, sales are going on hold because your boss's boss's boss told me it's going on hold. <clears throat> That's not the key, key item. So <clears throat> with BIAs, the best thing to do to find out what's the most important thing is go to your executives right off the bat. Find out what they want, uh, you know, and then your strategies and, you know, the resources you need, your capabilities, you know, have to then... Uh, be brought up to snuff to align with their expectations, you know, and what they want to see, you know, they, if they want to see sales come up in two hours, well, then we work on sales coming up in two hours, two hours. But if sales goes on hold, you know, everything stops, the pipeline stops. You can still have your meetings, uh, just no signing of contracts, you know, um, whatever the case may be. Then there's no point in having sales at the top of the list, right? You know, why would you go to that effort? Why would you even present that to them? And that's what's happening a lot with the BIAs. Now, BIAs came along um, in the uh, 1990s really as a way to address uh, the oncoming Y2K, quote, disaster, the disaster that never occurred, you know. We'll, we'll chalk it up to good planning, you know. But, you know, it came about then, you know, if something goes down, well, then, you know, what do we need? What has to be up and running, you know? And really that whole 
mindset of BIAs and, and things like that was still relatively new, you know, and maybe for Y2K, it was perfect because if things did go wrong, if the power did go out, if our systems did shut down when, uh, you know, the date flipped over from uh, 1999 to 2000 and it flipped to 1900, you know, then that might have, uh, it, it had its place. Now, now that we've become a lot more mature in our programs and our methodologies, our standards, our guidelines, you know, our um, research, you know, in disasters and our, our scientific awareness and, and the different things that are out there, our technologies, is a BIA really needed? Let's face it, you know, face it everyone's going to need email right away. You know, everyone wants the communications, you know, to uh, clients and customers right away. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people say payroll is the most important thing. The only thing payroll is important to is a payroll company. Because, and I know this from being on a couple of phone calls with financial institutions about contingencies, if they can just run the previous payroll, if you are out <clears throat> and you're afraid that, um, you know, you're not going to be able to pay employees, they'll just run the previous payroll. I know that you have the risk, you know, so-and-so had left or, you know, we had a new person hired. Well, that's small. You know, or you're not going to run a $4 million payroll just because somebody isn't getting paid $500. You know, that's, uh, you know, or you overpay $500. You can do those adjustments later. You know, so the BIA at one point, you know, was capturing a lot of that stuff and dependencies and things. But now there's so much technology. And, you know, if you don't have technology in your business, you don't really have a business. You know, let's face it. You know, we are very dependent on technology. And that's going to, going to be, you know, what your BIA is going to be based on. You know, all the functions in the world, it doesn't matter. You know, what you do in your organization, you need the technology to be there. You know, which technology, you know, uh, is, will be defined by what the key priorities are by executives. <clears throat> Not by a director of, you know, marketing or, you know, a project management group or, you know, you know other different you know, accounts uh, payable or receivable or something, you know. And I know there's always a panic that, oh, well, if we don't do this, you know, we're going to get fined and, uh, you know, so-and-so will get angry. You know, pick up the phone and talk to that, uh, you know, external partner. You'd be very surprised by what they say. You will be very surprised. I know management likes to, uh, some management like to uh, put the fear in you, you know, that, you uh, um, that, uh, you know, if we don't do this, we're going to get fined. Well, you know, even the government, and I've been on a call with them too, you know, uh, listing in when they say, well, okay, if you have a disaster, that's fine. You know, just, you know, ask us for an extension and we'll give you an extension based on the situation. You know, if you know, somebody has a bomb that goes off, you know, uh, Lord forbid, you know, and I'm not suggesting this, knock on wood, but if a bomb goes off, you know, major fire and uh, unfortunately there's casual casualties, you're not going to get a, re a report to the government or a major financial institution, you know, by its deadline. Uh, they're not going to expect you to deliver that. You know, there, there's no way, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> they will you know, say, you know, and in my case it was, you know, well, automatically, you know, you can have a week extension you know, uh, until you get to your alternate uh, location or offices, whatever the case may be, and, you know, resend it, you know, they, that exists. And the BIA, a lot of people tend to think that, no, it doesn't, you know, none of that stuff is there. Well, it, it is, you know, um, the BIA, you know, gets into so much detail, you know, that by the time you finish it and uh, um, some of the stuff is out of date. You know, I read, I recently read an article uh, on uh, LinkedIn or uh, Continuity Central or someplace where a BIA took somebody a year to complete before they actually had a findings report. And that findings report, you know, uh, contained stale information. You know, in the meantime, people had left, people were onboarded, there had been some uh, 
project implementations, which changed applications, versionings, you know, the way they did things. So the BIA at the end was almost useless. And I mentioned the uh, uh, findings report. And I, I, one thing that I've always found interesting is that a lot of people will say the BIA is the most important aspect of a business continuity program. And I've written that. I actually have a book on that. You know, business impact uh, analysis, uh, building a strong foundation. You know, forgot the title. It was 10 years ago. But uh, <clears throat> building the foundation, solid foundation or something for BCP programs. And, you know, I, I, I've said that, you know, uh, the BIA is, you know, important. So why is there no standard for the findings report? I really found that rather interesting, you know, that it's something so important, but there is no guideline on how to present it. And there's probably a few reasons for that, you know, different organizations, different industries have different ways of presenting information. Um, I've, my last client that I worked for liked everything in PowerPoint. All the reports were in PowerPoint. You know, um, they call them decks. And it, it, believe me, sometimes it made things easier and sometimes they were just a big pain in the butt, you know, <clears throat> trying to do all these uh, incredible things in PowerPoint and sometimes it just didn't allow you to do it. So it was uh, frustrating sometimes. Uh, but there's no standard. The only thing that uh, they do say, you know, uh, different uh, industries and uh, by industries, I mean, you know, the uh, um, governing bodies, so to speak, you know, say, you know, you gotta have timeframes, you gotta have your dependencies, you gotta have your resources, all, you know, and I've seen some of these finding reports and, you know, they're pages and pages, you know, if it's a, either a Word document or a PowerPoint, it's just slides and you can't expect executives to to uh, review that you know and each organization is going to have their own way of wanting to present it anyway but really you just got to take the stuff that uh, is important to executives you know provided you did meet with them and talk with them find out what their priorities are talk to them about that you know and all the rest is additional information but give them a summary of what's going on you know this is what's what's needed to do what you said is the priority you know, so it comes across as, you know, if we're doing that, why do we need to do this full BIA, which sometimes can have, you know, a couple of hundred questions, you know, yeses and nos, and, you know, and it never seems to allow for, well, it depends, you know, as an answer, you know, if something happens on a Monday, the answer is a no. If it happens on a Tuesday, it's a yes. If it happens on a Wednesday, well, it's a maybe, you know, <clears throat> something could happen and Thursday and Fridays, maybe it knows again. So it makes it very difficult, you know, and uh, one thing that people don't seem to like is getting an answer that says it depends. And BIAs don't can, tend to allow for that. You know, uh, now some applications will, so, but uh, hopefully, you know, we'll see what happens with the, uh, the BIA in the coming years because I'm sensing that there's going to be a change uh, with regards to it, different ways of doing it. And I know, uh, I think it's BCI <coughs> has a, uh, the uh, different ways of, uh, the release different ways of uh, performing a BIA. And it'll be interesting to see when or if it ever gets to the point where, you know what, we're still calling this a BIA, but it really isn't a BIA. What you really need are these five, six things. You know, and number one, talk to executives. And then number two, you know, align your technology and your recovery strategies and capabilities to those priorities. And then everything else you start dealing with uh, later on. And so it'll be interesting to see. Now, I'm not saying that is what's going to happen. It's just, uh, you know, with all the different people that I speak to, there, there is a chance that that is going to change. You know, so we'll see what happens. I have a quick little drink of water before I lose my voice again. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, stay prepared, everybody.